Hi, this is Professor Jacob. In this video, we will discuss using the PowerPoint 2016 application. Of course, PowerPoint is one of the office suite of applications. Um, and it is a powerful presentation tool. Um, and so you have it right at your disposal when you use Office 365, which is the subscription version to uh, Office 2016. Uh, basically what that means is you're buying a subscription or you're using your um, college's subscription. And each time um, Microsoft makes a change to the application or the suite, it is automatically made in the application with the subscription version. Whereas with the uh, installed version, of course, you get, you know, updates or upgrades, okay, um, that you have to approve. But automatically in the Office 365 subscription version, you know, those updates are, are made automatically. All right. Um, now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the semester, uh, when we were working with Access 2016, all of these applications are extremely more powerful than anything we present in a CIT 105 Introduction to Computing class. And so I definitely want you to know that, have it in your memory banks, and know that there's so much more to these applications. And I encourage you to continue your education in the Microsoft Office suite of applications. Um, there is another class, it is uh, CIT 130, which is the productivity software class. It is the next class up. So where this class ends at chapter four, for each of the office applications, that class starts at chapter five. All right, so um, now some of the basics of PowerPoint. All right, some of the basics of PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and give it to PowerPoint. And I'm just going to do a search instead of finding it on my desktop or on the start menu. When you open PowerPoint, of course, you're going to see the recent list and then all of the templates, you know, a short brief template list here. But you can also search for online templates and themes. Since I'm doing a demonstration, I'm not necessarily looking for a theme. So I'm going to go into the blank presentation here. Now, some of the Basics are, of course, adding design features using your design tab. And a lot of you have already done this. You explained this to me at the beginning of the semester. You've already sort of worked with PowerPoint, and it's pretty neat, pretty cool. Um, so that's one of the basics, of course, um, presenting. I'm just going to select something, and I'm going to type in Hello Class. And a nice warm message. Have a great day. All right. So um, another basic is, of course, presenting your slideshow. Of course, we only have one slide. So I'm just going to tap on to the slideshow button here on our status bar. And we get to see that slide or present that slide. OK. That's considered to be presentation mode. Um, and then, of course, if I want to get out of presentation mode or slideshow mode, I could just use the escape key. It takes me back into design mode, basically, of, of my um, PowerPoint slideshow. If I wanted to add, add audio and video, of course, I would use the insert tab. And over here in the media group, I would add video or audio. I could also do a screen recording, which that's pretty neat. Um, but these are again, these again are basics, okay? Adding and formatting text. If I wanted to change Hello Class um, to a different color, okay? And get something that kind of stands out. Um, if I wanted to change the font, okay? If I wanted to make it more if I wanted to make it stand out using bold and italics, I could definitely do that. That's adding and formatting text. 
okay? Adding animations, of course, I would use the animations tab and I would select here um, entrance, uh, emphasis, or exit, okay? Say, for instance, if I wanted my uh, Hello Class to fly in, I could definitely select that and then it would come um, from the bottom and you see the little graphic here with the arrow showing you what direction it's going to come. Um, you can also get it to uh, fade in, like so. Okay, that's an entrance. Or you could get it to make an emphasis, teetering. Okay, a little attitude. That's what I call teetering. Um, and also, you could also make it exit you know, with with a particular animation, okay? And that was float out. Of course, there are other advanced animations that you can add, such as timing. You could set it to trigger off of something else, maybe a click or, you know, some other text on the page. That's pretty basic for PowerPoint, okay? So, you know, you've probably used that in high school, all right, uh, or even, you know, on a job, maybe for a community group, or maybe you're do, doing some volunteer work for your church or, or whatever. That's pretty basic stuff, okay? So what I'm going to do with this video is to give you some hints, some tips, some tricks as to doing some of these things using your keyboard, okay? So we're going to go over some keyboard shortcuts, all right? So let's say if I wanted to have some pictures in this slide, I'm just going to right click over here in my slide, in my uh, slide pane, all right, or where you see the thumbnail. Some call this the thumbnail pane. If you click right there where your mouse pointer turns into a double arrow and click and drag it back to the left, that sort of goes away, and then you have the thumbnails bar that appears and if you want it back you can just select that little arrow and our thumbnail returns but this is called the slides all right um and so if i wanted to um say for instance insert a picture okay um let's go ahead and get a new slide and i'm going to insert a picture okay on this slide i already have somewhat of um, new slide set up and it's got a title and looks like content you know and that's the the format of the of the new slide it looks like um, now I could use that I could definitely do that and select picture here and then add the picture or I could click on add to text here and then I could use a keyboard shortcut Okay, so I could use Alt, the Alt key, A L T, plus the N key and P. So Alt N P, which opens up the insert picture dialog box. All right, so you have to kind of hit those at the same time Alt N as in Nancy and P as in picture. All right, so I have one here, a little cute. I love Pomeranians. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I have this picture of this little Pomeranian. And it says, hey, boo. And you can, really can't see it all too well. But um, let's say, for instance, if there's tons of things that you can do with pictures, OK? And you see that this contextual tab has appeared. It's called Picture Tools and Format. And it only appears when you add pictures, OK? So here, I could compress the picture, meaning make the picture smaller. When I save it, it, it makes it smaller so that when I save the file, the file is not too large. OK, I could do that and click OK. All right. Um, there's a number of other things that I can do. Um, I could also add borders to the picture. OK, um, I could add effects to the picture. OK, make it just look a little different. And this is called live preview that we're doing. And you can see the image change as I roll my mouse pointer over it. All right. So there's tons of things that you can do. 
One of the things that I like doing on smaller pictures is, of course, uh, making those pictures larger. OK, now it's still compressed, so it really doesn't matter if we make it bigger or not. So you would just use your shift key, hold it down. And in the bottom right hand corner of your picture where you see these little circles go around the picture, these are called sizing handles. All right. Now, in every other application, they could be circles or they could be squares, okay? But they're still referred to as sizing handles. Hold down your shift key, click and drag downward to make that image bigger. And isn't that just cute? That's so adorable. I love Pomeranians. All right, so uh, we've added a picture by using Alt, N, and P. Um, we could um, use um, the different tabs on our ribbon um, and how we would access, access those with our keyboard. We just simply hold down the Alt key, release, and there appears what are called key tips, key tips. And these appear in small squares with a letter or a number. And this allows you to select the exact tab that you want. So if I wanted to go to the insert tab, I would select in, instead of using my mouse, I would select on my keyboard the letter N, and it would open up the insert tab. We see the insert tab is available. And then all of the key tips for everything that is on the insert ribbon actually appears, okay? So from there, I could add a hyperlink if I wanted to, and that would be I. So I'm gonna just strike I, and from here we see the insert hyperlink dialog box where we can begin to type in um, a website, and I already have it here, jefferson.kctcs.edu. Now, if you wanted to display some other, um, you know, text instead of the address, you definitely can do that. Um, but it's recommended that if you do that, you sort of um, have it in there. Okay. Um, so, so let's I'm just going to type in Jefferson, and then I'm going to do Alt N for insert, and then I for hyperlink. All right. So the text I want to display, of course, is Jefferson. But the website that I want to go to is jefferson.kctcs.edu. So here I see Jefferson. All right. And but if you roll your mouse pointer over it, you should be able to see the link. And you won't be able to see the link, that's right, in PowerPoint until you are in slideshow view or presentation view, all right? If you roll your mouse pointer over it, there is the link, all right? So using the escape key to get back into our design view of our presentation. Um, so some other little keyboard shortcuts. If I wanted to see how it's gonna how my slide's gonna look, and I want it to be a little larger so that I can get a glimpse of, you know, proportions or whatever, and maybe the ribbon is just too big. Let's get rid of the ribbon, okay? Now, normally you would be able to come over here and select this little button here to collapse the ribbon, but you see that key, keyboard shortcut, Control plus F1? So that's just if you need a little bit more space, Control, and then F1. No, I hit the wrong key there. Sorry. <laughs> so control F1. Get rid of the ribbon. And so now all the only thing you have is the tab that's here. Of course, you can bring the ribbon back at any time using that control F1 again, 
or you can merely select a tab and it will pop down the ribbon for you. Okay, so Control F1 expands or collapses the ribbon. Um, let's say if you wanted to insert a text box, maybe you want to draw a text box over here on the page. Okay, definitely possible. Um, so let's see. Um, to insert a text box, you would do Alt N J. And remember, when you're using the Alt key, um, it's best to hit all of these keys together. So one time, Alt N J. Alt N J. And what that allows us to do is, of course, we could insert anything, not just a text box here. I'm going to show you how to do a text box in a moment. But this kind of expands, you know, what we can do. We can add uh, a bitmap image, which, you know, is, you know, an image that you would find on the web or, you know, maybe an image we saved to our phone or whatever. We could also insert Excel charts, worksheets, okay, graphs a graph chart, um, PowerPoint presentations from 97, PowerPoint 97 to 2003, okay, macro enabled presentations, okay, so you can add a lot of stuff here. If you have other files, of course, you would click on create from file, browse like you would to turn in something um, or to open something and find it on your computer, okay, definitely possible. So, back to inserting a text box okay now we see that um, we have all of our tabs here we have head, insert, design, transition, animation, slideshow, review, and view all right um, now there is if you strike the alt key and do back into the into the area where the text would be alt in yeah that j is still there but there is let's go here it is so it would be alt jd okay so alt jd and then X. So Alt JDX inserts a text box. It turns your mouse pointer into kind of a upside down cross where you can then begin to draw um, the text box here, any size that you want. And you can actually put text into this text box. All right, so that's inserting a text box. Um, if you wanted to insert word art, you can do Alt, N as in Nancy, and W for word art. So Alt, N, W, all together. So it opens up the word art palette where you can select anything on here, okay? It's up to you. Um, also, let's say, for instance, if you have this extremely large worksheet that you're working on, not worksheet, sorry, we just came from Excel, uh, extremely large presentation that you're working on or extremely important presentation and you need everything to look the same way. Maybe there are different users working on, you know, collaborating on one presentation, but you want it to look exactly the same. What you could do before you begin to share it is you could um, make what is called a slide master. So that's when you want all of your slides to contain, contain the same fonts and images, such as logos, um, date, um, 
you know, a footer, maybe it's a, a company slogan or something like that. And so you can make changes to the slide master and all of the changes will be applied to all of the new slides. Okay. So, and that is definitely something that, that you can do. Um, and so how would we find where the slide master is? Let's make our, um, do we remember how to make our um, ribbon appear? We don't want to toggle. We want it to actually appear and stay in place. So remember, control F1 to bring our ribbon back onto the screen to stay for good. All right. We could do control F1 again to make it go away. So on the view tab, on the view tab, we could, in the master view area, we could go into slide master. And what this does is this gives us the ability to add things to our slides that we want to see on every slide that we actually create. So you see the footer area here. Um, I wouldn't necessarily do, um, you know, a title unless you want that title to appear on each page. Um, but of course, you can you can select how you want the text to look. Um, you can select, you know, page number, content, any of this, and add things to it. And it has its own close button, okay? Just pretty much like the header and footer um, in Excel or in Word, all right? So it has its own close button, but you could also change the size of the slide. So it could be widescreen, which is what we're using now, or it could be standard. Okay, and I'm just going to say maximize, and you'll see the noticeable difference there. Now, when we go into slide show view or presentation view, you get to actually see a visible difference from the widescreen. Okay, escape again to get back to our design view, and we're going to change that slide size again back to widescreen 16, 9, and let's go into presentation view and we see that it covers more of the screen. All right, escape. And then of course in the slide size area you can do custom slide size. So you could actually set your own height and width of the slide that you wanted to do. You could also make it in portrait or landscape. All right. Uh, and your, your notes or handouts or your outline to your presentation in portrait or landscape. That's up to you. All right. All right, so that's slide master, slide master view, okay, and that is in the view tab. Now, as I spoke to, I kind of alluded to earlier, you may want to work on a presentation with other people um, or collaborate with other people, maybe on a presentation, maybe you're in a group and each of you have to do a couple of slides for your presentation. Um, sometimes it's best to use Office 365 um, and share your, your PowerPoint presentation. And so you can see people updating their portion of the presentation, um, you know, all of you updating it together. So you can see when changes have been made to the, the presentation. Just by using this little button here, share, you share this presentation and you see who is working on it at the time. Now, save to the cloud for KCTCS, the cloud technically means one drive for KCTCS, which each student and each faculty member has a OneDrive account, okay? So click save to cloud. And you should see when you click on Save As, you should see OneDrive KCTCS and then your email address. From here, you can double click, which will basically open up into your, um, your OneDrive account. And you can then give your PowerPoint presentation a name. All right. Click. And I'm going to go into 2017 spring semester here. That's my folder that I've created. And I'm going to click Save. Okay. 
And so now I have my file and it is shared onto my OneDrive for KCTCS.